of a drug awareness program that's sponsored by the state of South Carolina and each individual community in the state uh, supposed to be taking part in this program. And judging from the size of the crowd here today, I believe Allendale County has probably done more to bring this program to public attention than any other candidate we've got in the news release on. Every, every week the governor's office sends a news release to the radio station and telling us what each community does. But Allendale County at this point looks to me like it's been the most active in uh, Carol Campbell's uh, fight against drugs, thanks to Mayor William Holmes and uh, uh, the mayors of Fairfax, Sycamore and Ulmer, and all you good folks in the police and law enforcement. I'm supposed to be a master of ceremonies this afternoon. We've got a pretty long program, so we're going to get things underway. First, we'd like to uh, thank uh, associate of mine, Dr. Rock, for his uh, PA system and everything. And uh, refreshments are over in the armory after the program today, right behind the courthouse. And you're welcome to come over and partake of those. And uh, Ronnie Jackson wanted me to remind you that there's going to be a Halloween dance tonight over at the Allendale National Guard Armory, right behind us, sponsored by the NCO Club. It's a Halloween dance. It's $4 single, $6 couple. Starts at 8 o'clock, okay? Now, to get into the meat of the program here this afternoon, we've got some distinguished guests, and one of them is the Dr. Reverend E.L. White. Uh, I've been calling him Reverend White over these years, and he became a doctor a couple of years ago, so now he's got two titles. And Dr. Reverend E.L. White will now give our invocation. May we pray. Almighty give up life, who does offer not only the hope of heaven, but strength for daily living through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear us now as we bow before thee seeking for thy forgiveness of our sins and grace that we may be made over in the image of thy son, our Redeemer. We humbly confess that we have failed again and again to yield ourselves to the renewing, renewing power of thy Holy Spirit, that we have submitted willingly instead to the inclinations of our own hearts and the temptations of human pride, of bodily appetite, and worldly pleasure. But thou didst send thy son that it might not always be thus. And we come to thee asking that even as thou didst redeem us from death and hell, thou will deliver us from temptation in life and the sins which so easily beset us. Grant that measure of faith which places full confidence not in our own strength, but in thine, creating us clean hearts that we may see the issues of life with mind thinking thy thoughts. Separate us unto thyself so that while we live in the world, we may not be of the world. Make us fit temples for thy Holy Spirit that we may shine from our lives with the light of thy purity until others shall see in us the beauty of thy salvation. And though our witness may be led to faith and trust in him whom to know us is life eternally. These things we ask in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. At this time, I'd like to present one of the gentlemen who is responsible for such a great crowd and such a successful My Choice is Drug Free campaign here in Allendale County, the Honorable Mayor William Holmes of Allendale. Thank you, Carl. I've walked about a mile and I'm very uh, worn out. So if I don't sound very fiery today, uh, I got to blame the walk. To the uh, Master of Ceremony, to our distinguished platform guests, to my fellow citizen of Allendale County, to the sponsors that have made this event possible, uh, to our hardworking committee. On behalf of the town of Allendale, I'd just like to thank you for your being here today, and I bring greeting 
from all the citizens of Allendale County. We have had a successful week, and we all here today know the purpose of this event. We are trying to promote drug awareness and drug education in our community. I think it is time now for the community to make a stand. We can no longer sit back and do nothing. If we do, we may not have a bright future for our kids. And our effort here today and in days to come is to help save our children. We need to save our children. We must save our children. One of the things that we want to send from this event, from this day, we want to send a message to our community that we will get involved, that we will be involved, that we will be concerned about our community. Now for all our young people, we know what drug can do. We know that drug is a killer. So we hope to give you the kind of information that you can make the right choice. And that choice is to remain drug free. If you are ever, young people, if you are ever tempted to use drugs or alcohol, just simply say no. And go to the proper authority for a system. What I want to leave with the drug runners, the drug pushers, and the drug users in our community, I want to leave this message. You can run but you're not going to hide. You can run, but you're not going to get away with it. Your days in Allendale County is short-lived. With the support of law enforcement, locally, law enforcement from our state law enforcement division, and law enforcement from the federal level. Let us send a message today. Let us send a message to the drug runners, the dope pushers, that their day is numbered in Allendale County. Join with me in making that pledge. Parents, school teachers, community leaders, all concerned citizens of Allendale County, let us pledge today that we will not tolerate these drug runners and drug pushers in our community anymore. We're not going to. Again, we thank you for your support. We know that Allendale County has a serious drug problem. Let's not kid ourselves about it. And if this occasion or this event can lead to the salvation of our children, it's going to be worth it. Let's join hand, join effort. It only ain't going to take our concentrated effort to have a drug-free community. So join with me. Let's send a message to the dope runners, the dope pushers, that your days in Allendale County is numbered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Holmes. Next gentleman on the list of uh, outstanding speakers here this evening uh, is a gentleman who, if you are a member of the 
drug running organizations, as Mayor Holmes said, you get to go to live with him here for long. Annandale County is the site of a new uh, state penal facility, and the gentleman that's going to be running it, he and I were talking earlier, Mr. Bob Curry, and don't let Bob fool you, he did not walk all the way from the town hall to up here. Now, he, he's rough and tough, but he's not a mean guy. In my picture of a, a warden in a state penal facility is somebody that's rough and tough and mean. But he's big, and I imagine he's tough, but he's, he's a nice fella, and I'd like for you to welcome him into our community, the new warden, Robert Curry of the Allendale County Penal Facility. Warden. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today on a subject matter that is obviously a deep concern of most parents and local officials and everyone that is caring about how other people live. My job is to hold people in, keep them away from you. I'll do that job. It is most important that you realize that if you see someone doing it to your family and that this community is your family, that you get them off the streets. The only way that we can deal with the drug problem is to have people in the community aware of that problem and willing to do something about it. Talk is always cheap. It doesn't mean a thing unless you're willing to go out and work. And sitting back and looking at other folk don't accomplish a thing. The people that I have with me are a result of other folk doing what they're paid to do. Other folk in the community who are interested in making sure that their areas stay drug free. And sitting down and looking at other folk and say, well, somebody else will handle that problem will only perpetuate the problem in the community. And if you don't think it happened to you, and people that are very close to you, take a look around. Reality is something that we can never avoid. We don't want to necessarily accept. But if you look around you and look at the people that are even sitting close to you, has drug affected them? Or if you really want to get really close to home, look at you and your life and what's happening in your family. Is it affecting you? We can only ask you to look at these things and hopefully you can gain and grow. How do you spell relief? From the misery, the hurt, the pain, the sadness of drugs. My conversation with you is going to be direct and to the point. I'll never understand why people sit back and watch. Do something. Your presence here today is a very clear indication that you want to stand for something in regards to this particular matter. And if this is the case, and if this is what you want to implore to the other folk in the community and the state, then do those things that are good for you and your family. The community wants your support. The community needs it. How do you spell relief? You don't spell it with crack. You don't spell it with cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and to step on some toes, some alcohol. You don't spell it with those things because when you do, you add problems to your life. You think you got problems now, you start using drugs. The children in the area, you know, they're looking at the families and the parents as models. If you live the life that you don't want them to do, it's, it's not like they used to say, do as I say do, but not as I do. Sometimes folk don't realize that that child is looking at everything that's going on with the adult. Their role models are the parent, older brothers and sisters, and folk in the community, their peer groups, their buddies, their good friends. They're looking at what they're doing. And if no one is doing anything to resolve the matter of drug use in this area, then it will perpetuate. And if that is the case, 
we're going to see a whole lot more people in my jail. Not that I'm that going to get upset about that because the more you sin, the longer I'll be here. And that is a definite true fact. And believe it or not, it hurts you anyway because of the fact you're paying for it. Taxpayers don't believe how bad things can be. Money is spent. It's going to cost well in the area of eight to nine million dollars per year to operate that prison. We have a total of 31 prisons in this state. And for the state with the per capita that we have, that's a lot of money. It hurts you either one way or the other. Either you support the system to avoid the problem or you sit back and wait and let it cost you. It comes out of your pocket. That is a reality that is can't, it just can't be avoided. That is something that we just can't get around. Realistically, it affects you financially. And usually, that is the baddest way to work with some other problems, dealing with it financially. If we deal with it from the standpoint that when we watch our situations, ourselves, and govern ourselves accordingly, we tend to add more support to the idea of helping the younger ones, as well as some of these older ones, avoid the complications, the misery of drugs. I'll leave you with this thought. In dealing with our everyday lives, in dealing with the people, for example, that I will have in my facility, I must understand why they're there. You must understand how and why they got there. Knowing those elements, we can perhaps turn around an area, a neighborhood, a town. Believe you me, I want to do all I can to help the kids and the young adults and some of the older adults avoid the complication of drug misery. It's a serious matter. If not, look around. There may be some people that are, that, that are here today that weren't here last year. They may be in jail, or they may be dead, or they may be just plain out too wigged out to be able to be functioning with normal people. It's important that you listen and you learn and you carry that thought with you. And hopefully you gain something from just hearing what we have to say today. Again, Mayor Holmes and other distinguished guests, I thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. And again, we will be showing some tours down the road of our facility. And I'm going to invite each and every one of you to come out before we bring the prisoners in and give you an opportunity to see where people are going to have to live for sometimes the rest of their lives. We're going to try to get them out of there. We're going to try to not necessarily rehabilitate, but to educate. But we need your assistance in doing that. But for all of you, we thank you for the opportunity. And may God be all with all of you. Thank you very much. At this point, we've got the Allendale Combined Choir, a combination of different choirs throughout the county to sing for you. Oh! 
Yvonne Wilkins. Miss Wilkins. And she's going to introduce uh, a speaker from the federal government. The FBI is in town. Miss Wilkins. Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Lloyd Henderson. Mr. Henderson is one of three agents assigned to the Aiken Resident Agency. He also covers seven counties. Mr. Henderson is a criminal investigator. He has 14 years in law enforcement. He graduated from Abilene Christian Union College. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lloyd Henderson. Mr. Mayor, distinguished guests, citizens of Allendale, youth, children of Allendale, and my brother law enforcement officers, I appreciate you having me here today, and I'm overwhelmed with the uh, response in the county and the sea of red. I've been asked to discuss the FBI's newest priority program, drugs, and what you can do as citizens to assist in eliminating this from our society. The FBI became an active participant in our government's drug enforcement efforts in 1982. That's when we received concurrent jurisdiction with the Drug Enforcement Administration, better known as the DEA. Since, we have adopted a national drug strategy aimed at identifying and stopping major drug trafficking enterprises. FBI resources and technical expertise 
are directed against upper echelons of these criminal organizations. Our agents conduct long-term investigations so important in reaching the leadership of these enterprises. Since the drug strategy has been in place, our investigators have produced 4,000 convictions of key drug figures, and we have recovered a total of $155 million through seizures and court-ordered forfeitures. In addition, the federal government has initiated several other drug supply reduction initiatives, such as expanding the role of the military and U.S. intelligence communities in drug enforcement, establishing 13 organized crime drug enforcement task forces around the country to attack high-level drug traffickers in a multi-agency approach, creating the National Narcotics Border Interdiction System to coordinate multi-agency drug interdiction activity, increasing significantly DEA's resources as well as the commitment of the Internal Revenue Service's resources, placing increased emphasis on sophisticated investigative techniques such as electronic surveillance and financial investigations aimed at seizing the assets of drug traffickers, expanding the State Department's assistance for crop eradication and enforcement activities in foreign countries, and issuing in 1986 a presidential national security directive stating that the international drug trade is a national security concern of the United States. As a result of increased resources and new initiatives, federal agencies responsible for reducing the, f the supply of illicit drugs in the United States significantly increased their accomplishments. However, the enormous profits that can be made in the illicit drug trade provide an incentive for new traffickers to fill the ranks of those immobilized by federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Thus, supply reductions is not the answer to the drug problem in the United States. As parents, involved Americans, law enforcement officers, I know you share with me a deep concern for the lives of our youth and the future of this great nation. The continuing flow of illegal drugs into our country signals that drugs are still in demand, are still being used by Americans in all walks of life, and are still destroying the lives and future of unprecedented numbers of our teenagers, our young adults, including young professionals. I'm sure that we all agree that it is unlawful to rob a bank. No one questions this. It is unlawful to import and distribute heroin. No one questions this either. But it is also unlawful to use any illegal drug. And responsible Americans must never question this. Yet drug abuse continues to increase at a staggering rate. Some people, people openly abuse drugs, especially cocaine. Even many of our children's role models, star athletes, doctors, lawyers, and entertainers, consider drugs chic and even socially acceptable. But the make-believe image of a glamorous, successful, and career-free, or carefree, cocaine user is in stark contrast to the all-too-real picture of a teenager losing his life to a drug overdose. Thus, the answer to the drug problem in the United States is not supply reduction, but demand reduction. Reducing the demand for drugs has been increasingly recognized by Congress and the executive branch as a crucial element in the federal government's effort to reduce drug abuse. Many law enforcement and health officials agree that efforts to reduce the supply of illegal drugs cannot succeed as long as the demand for drugs in our society is so great. There are two major components to the current federal reduction strategy, drug abuse prevention and treatment. Drug abuse research efforts supplement these components as new knowledge directed at the causes and consequences of drug abuse is developed and applied. The FBI and health officials agree that preventing drug abuse before it starts is a key to long-term success in resolving the drug problem. Prevention involves public awareness and drug education. Although many agencies are involved, departments of education, health and human services, and action 
which administers and coordinates federally sponsored domestic volunteer programs, have primary responsibility for administrating federal drug abuse prevention programs. In the 1980s, prevention activities include awarding grants, providing information and technical assistance, and utilizing volunteers. The current federal strategy also encourages the private sector to take part in the anti-drug effort. A wide variety of groups and organizations have responded, often in highly creative ways. A large corporation, for example, has provided information on drug abuse and a specifically designed comic book aimed at our young people. I hope you share my outrage over the destruction brought by the illegal drug trafficking. Those of us in South Carolina are acutely aware of the problem and communities here are banding together to help law enforcement carry the message that the supply of drugs will never cease until the demand for drugs is eliminated. Thus, what can you do as citizens to assist in eliminating drugs from our society? You must provide the necessary leadership, but so much more needs to be done. I urge you to continue to inspire others, particularly our youth, to enlist in this crusade, a crusade which can save what has been recognized as our nation's greatest resource, our children. Thank you very much. Once again, I introduce to you the Honorable Mayor of Allendale, William Holmes. Thank you, Carl. I'm very honored and pleased to have the opportunity to introduce our keynote speaker for this occasion. Our keynote speaker is a renowned personality. I guess he's one of the most famous person I've met in my lifetime. Uh, he is definitely a role model not only to the young people, uh, but he's a role model to old people as well. In 1983, living and working in a small Texas town, uh, our guest speaker was involved in a, I would call it a gross miscarriage of justice. Mr. Lanier Jeters was wrongfully in prison and it did not take until, he did not receive his freedom until concerned individuals uh, such as the NAACP and when 60 Minute, that's a CBS program, got information about this potential or possible miscarriage of justice, they brought Mr. Jeter's case nationwide and in 1985 he was exonerated. Mr. Jeter is a graduate of South Carolina State College. He works in Columbia with the Department of Social Service as a child enforcer. enforcer. Uh, he is married and has two children. Uh, his wife is with him today and also his mother. It gives me a great deal of pleasure and I want you to join me in a standing greeting for our keynote speaker, Mr. Linnell Jeter. God, certainly it's an honor 
and a pleasure for me to be here today with you. Master Ceremony, Mayor Holmes, distinguished platform guest, you honor me by having me to share these moments with you today. I enjoyed myself being with this seal red, which are, which are a group of young people, could have turned down a little bit, which are a group of young people who I believe have started the foundation of no drug tolerance in this county. If I were you parents, I would certainly be surprised. If not surprised, I would be very honored that these children have taken and undertaken this task of ridding themselves of drugs in this community. If I can get the young people to tell me what's the choice, if you can, tell me what's the choice. What's the choice? What's the choice? What's the choice? Can't hear you. What's the choice? What's the choice? Stand up if you believe it. Get on your feet. I was certainly appreciative of Yvonne and her director for asking me to come here and share with you a little bit about my feelings on drugs. I also brought along my wife, Marisa. Will you please stand? My mother, Mrs. Ella Mae Willis. Will you stand? And I also have my brother-in-law, Benny Burrison, in the group. Many of you all might know him. I would like to talk on the subject, stop drug abuse. But before I get into what drug abuse is, I think it's appropriate that we define what is drugs. Drugs is a substance used to cure or treat and prevent disease. Drug is a substance that is used to treat, cure, or prevent disease. And if any one of you all in the audience realize what I just said, would you raise your hands? Would you raise your hands a little higher? Young people, thank you. Drugs are usually prescribed by a doctor. I'm not talking about the drugs that one might go and get on the corner. That person is not a doctor. He's a drug pusher. Drugs are usually prescribed by somebody who has gone to school and gotten a good education and who has set his life to cue people. What is drug abuse? How many people know what drug abuse is? Raise your hands. Raise your hands a little higher. Drug abuse is when people take the drugs that are not prescribed by a doctor and use those drugs. That person is abusing his mind and that person is abusing his body. This is an example of drug abuse. I'm so honored to participate in this Red Ribbon Rally because of what and how it started. As you all know, one man gave his life a federal drug agent, I believe in 1985, trying to curtail or stop drug abuse and the spread of drugs. How many in the audience know that particular fact? You should know these things because it's very important. But do you not know that alcohol is a drug? On my way this morning to pick up my brother-in-law, I noticed a young man walking alone as if he had walked miles to get to town. 
And on my way to Allendale, I looked and I saw the same guy, but only he had a smile on his face with a small paper bag near his heart. Everybody knows what's in that paper bag. I, I can't imagine why he was smiling, but we all know once he had gotten out of the public light, he'll take that bottle and turn it up and drink it. But I guess you might ask, why is Linnell here today? I'm here because I fought against injustice and won. And I'm here to encourage you that you can fight against drugs and win. Who wants to win this fight against drugs? Speak up, I do. Who wants to win this fight against drugs? Say, I do. It is very difficult to get the attention of young people because they have so much energy. But it's the young people this message is railroaded down to. We want the young people to realize that if you take drugs, you've stopped your future right where you are. Because drugs will take you into crime, and crime does not pay. I was a young man who had graduated from South Carolina State College, was planning to get married in a few months, and had kissed my fiance, who was sitting there, and now my wife, goodbye, and I left off to Texas in my little brown Volkswagen. Got to Texas, commenced my work as an engineer, enjoyed every bit of it. Started participating in my Bible classes and work. Started visiting churches. Until one day, after pulling into my apartment, I was arrested in prison, placed among hardened criminals, most of them drug pushers, child abusers, murderers, burglars, thieves, what the warren will be locking up, the type of specimen that they will be, the warren will be locking up very soon in this county. I was a place among these people. Here I was, confused and perplexed, hurt and angry, not knowing why I was there. Thank God to my friends, who knew that I was at work at the time of the crime, came forth. Bear in mind, I had only been in Texas for six months. And there I was in prison among people that was ready to fight you if you looked at them too hard. Among people that somehow got drugs into the prison and jail system. People that felt that prison was their home. There I was separated from my loved ones. Prevented from getting married in December the 25th. Stop from working an engineering occupation that I love so much. There I was, 1,000 miles away from my home. Everything that I had fought for, all my family, my loved ones, everything was taken away from me. But one thing. And that was my belief in God. It was in those lonely minutes and hours and months that I gained a closer relationship to God through faith. And that's why I'm here today to, to not only tell you to stop drug abuse, but to stop injustice. Parents, it is injustice for you to go out to the clubs and let your children raise themselves. Teachers, 
it's an injustice for you to go to school to take home a paycheck and not teach your students. Law enforcement is a misuse to, of your duties to turn your head when a person can, can possibly be locked up for drunken drivingness and you let him go and he kills some young person that might have cued cancer. It's a misuse of your duties. So I say to you, you role models in the community, stand up for what is right. Stand up against drugs. You know how they did in the old times when they used to prevent people from coming in the neighborhood. They would get together and say, the neighbors would say, who is that person to another neighbor who is coming into the neighborhood? They didn't have an official crime watch program then. People knew and paid attention to what came into the community. Now that we've moved around so much, staying in one place momentarily, it is necessary for people to have an official crime watch program because people are living a fast life. You go to the store and get a fast supply of food. You go to the restaurant and get fast food. You pick up a newspaper at the stand very quickly. People don't have time to get to know who their neighbors are. And in this type of situation, unlike the old traditional situation in which we had, unlike this situation, people don't know each other in the community. And when they don't know each other, they don't talk to each other. And when they don't talk to each other, they let a drug addict get into the neighborhood. When they don't talk to each other, they let a guy that is willing to prostitute your young kids get into the neighborhood. When they don't know each other, you allow this abuse to occur. So I'm saying to you, establish a crime watch program. Continue to say no to drugs. Young people, stay in school and get your education. There is no future in attending the University of the Penitentiary. There is no future in that. However, there is a future in getting a good education. I got one, you might say, but you were locked up for something you didn't do. But I say to you, if it weren't for friends, family, and mostly of all, God, I wouldn't be an exonerated man standing in front of you today. I say to you, Paris, again, and I come to you so often because you spend so much time with our young people. I say to you, parents, stop going out so much and spend some time with your kids. Take them to the museum. You might, not, you might say there's not a museum here. Well, start one then. I'm quite sure your great, your, 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 your grandfather might own an old automobile he's been driving since the 30s. Put that in the museum. Don't say what you can't do, say what you can do. Stop crying and start doing something. Stop complaining and get up and do some work. Don't say I don't matter, say I matter. Anytime someone tries to entertain a negative thought, Give them a positive thought. If they say I can't do, tell them why they can do and why they must do. In closing, I've enjoyed the activities and I'm glad to be a part of this momentous and memorable occasion to be among the distinguished platform guests, many of you, you all in law enforcement. Many of the teachers and many of the parents, I'm competing because I'm talking with young people who hadn't seen their friends in a long time, but somehow get the message to these young people. 
get the message. That message is, and I ask again in a phrase like this as I started, what's the choice? What's the choice? Stand up. What's the choice? Drug free. Thank you very much. On your program, you probably see a skit by Sonia Albany and LaWanda Patterson, but well, one of the young ladies is not feeling well, and in the place, we're going to have a rap. And if the rappers are ready, it'll be John Davis and Charles Patterson and Joseph Rivers. Trying to tell you a story about Brian. Brian was smart, made A's and B's until he met up with this guy named Steve. <laughs> about Steve, man, it was tragic. Only 13 and a drug addict. They met on the corner, went round the back. Brian gave the money, Steve gave the crack. Two weeks later, guess who was inflicted? Yeah, you guessed it. Brian was inflicted. <laughs> Cause he was always on the go Joe my boy, he just go through it I kept on telling him, Joe don't do it But Joe my boy, he didn't care about nothing He thought that I was teasing He thought that I was puffing I told him that Christ could damage his brain He said he felt the pressure, he felt no pain He me think it funny I remember one time when Joe couldn't get no money So he stole from his dad And even his mom, now Joe was warning For JJ and R, he took the money Got stoned, the police called up And Joe my boy was cold out of the law. They throw the handcuffs on him and they throw them in the car. And when he woke up, he was surrounded by bar. He didn't know where he was at, but he was making time. Cause the crack cooked over. So let us be a lesson. Cause now you know. If someone off your crack, then please say no. to Reverend Joyce Thompson. He's been very instrumental in, in, in our effort. One of the things that when you get in the name calling, you may overlook someone, but everyone that's involved that have supported this program, we thank you very much. Uh, to our sponsors, 
uh, industry, uh, local merchants. We thank you very much. Again, we thank you for your support. Uh, thank you, Mayor Holmes. The benediction, the Reverend White, Dr. White, would you offer benediction for us? And then we will release the balloons, and I think people will scatter. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming and have a good afternoon.